We spoke with Jenna Krishnan who has been a lawyer, India Legal Counsel and Global Counsel with Compliances as part of a portfolio to understand the challenges with manual handling of compliances and what does a compliance officer look for in a technology enabled tool. So one of the questions that I would want to ask is that you know what were the biggest challenges that you faced when you were handling the compliances manually? Yeah, I want to uh, bifurcate this into two categories. I want to bifurcate it as uh, internal compliance and external compliance. Mm-hmm. When I mean what I mean by internal compliance is internal compliance is processes. You know that there are certain processes that let's say is set within the organization for in for the external compliance. For example, let me take the example of let's say Porsche. Okay, mm-hmm. so. Uh, there has to be a Porsche awareness session that is conducted. There has to be some kind of uh, assessment that happens every year among the among the employees to see whether you know. So the external compliance requirement is that every year there must be a knowledge awareness session that is been uh, that the company practices. But the internal process for that is that you know how the awareness session is disseminated to the people, and then there's some sort of evaluation mechanism over there. Uh, to see how many people have actually understood there's some sort of short questionnaire Uh, so that is one part you know how many people have done it uh, how have they fared what are the trends in all of that so that is that is internal compliance external compliance again is uh, what we all sort of understand which the uh, government imposes on us Mm -hmm. or various departments of the government Mm -hmm. so um, now what are the challenges you ask me so uh, the number one challenge uh, that i w- probably had was uh, understanding the difference in state laws i'm only talking about our country right so unless for instance again i'm coming back to posh there mm-hmm. is uh, there was uh, maharashtra state in about 2019 i think they mm-hmm. uh, came up with a requirement that every posh ic has to be registered with them now there is no, there was no direction given on how this registration has to take place. So it, it's not, it's happening through a letter that we have to send to the Ministry of Child Development and so on, with the names of the, uh, with the names of all the IC members. Now this is particular to Maharashtra state. So mm-hmm. what happens if you have a, you have a bigger organization with multiple posh ICs uh, in different uh, offices of theirs, which are in different states? So this is applicable only to the posh IC that is constituted within Maharashtra state. You know, these are the kind of challenges that we face because we may be under one corporate umbrella, but a particular IC of ours has a different uh, compliance requirement because of the state laws mandate that. Uh, There are certain leaves uh, policies, you know, there are certain days that have to be given uh, as leave or half day or, you know, in the factory. That is also governed by various state laws. So within a particular corporate umbrella, we we were having these issues with different state laws. So I think that was one challenge. The second challenge was keeping up to date on what are the changes because compliance is not our forte in the sense that that's not what we are looking at on a day to day basis as a legal counsel. I am not looking at that. I'm looking at something else. So uh, I don't I do not have the time to mm-hmm. keep myself updated on an, on an everyday basis on that because I have to keep myself up myself updated on something else on an everyday basis. Mm-hmm. So I think that was and then you know we would obviously get to know because somebody in, the, in your network will tell you you'll figure it out. But I wish I, if there was a more proactive approach where you know uh, mm-hmm. like like some software like this would then just throw up saying that hey there's something like this so we are able to plan otherwise it's all like firefight oh god it is like this okay you know then we are all going into our internal departments figuring out what we need and then making sure that we push out whatever we need to do it within the correct uh, within the deadline sometimes we have missed the deadline because we don't know so i think those uh, those are some of the challenges that i faced So what were the different yeah. ways in which one of course I did hear wherein you know uh, your network was giving you the feed. Now, yeah. What, what were yeah. the other ways in which you kind of uh, stayed updated? One thing is of course the network because that is your primary source of information uh, or any updation with the law. So mm-hmm. that is uh, that was the first thing. Um, the second thing obviously is the news because you hear uh, so you you read you subscribe to various journals or to uh, uh, various sort of news vending websites and then you you understand what's happening over there so those are sort of the sources from which you understand that there is a change that is coming 
all of this, for instance, the Maharashtra state uh, requirement that came in 2019 was what she told us that, you know, that, so our external, our third party uh, partners, they also tell us. So these are the three sources, I think, from which we get the information. Now, coming to your point on how did we handle it manually, uh, we just bifurcated it. We just delegated each of our tasks. So uh, finance and accounting would do all the tax related compliance. Uh, the company secretary would do all the company law related compliance uh, means minutes and this that you know everything that has to be uploaded on the MCA site and all of that and I and my team would do the uh, legal related compliance so that is how we bifurcated our roles and neither of us would really get into any anyone else's role uh, so it just now it works beautifully when there is no overlap between any uh, any role but the minute you have an overlap then you don't know who has to pick up the tab. You don't know whether it is uh, the company secretary or the legal. You don't know, you know. So when there is when there is an overlap, then you have a problem. Uh, so, so in fact, there are two things which come up. There are two things which uh, come up here. One, of course, overlap. So uh, the question is accountability. That you know who's who's responsible yeah. for it and who's taking it to yeah. a logical conclusion. Second is, uh, did you have a situation wherein you know because there was an overlap and you had. Uh, different sets of people who are trying to chase the same information or trying to do the same thing uh, in the process, creating a certain amount of redundancy or reinventing. Yeah. So, uh, so who will take accountability? Then it becomes on a case-to-case -case basis on for whom it is more important. Like, um, let me give you an example of, I'll give you a practical example of what happened. Mm -hmm. We were dealing with uh, a particular uh, debt recovery in the sense that there's a client who's not paying. So uh, the first question is, and you have already paid the GST and you know, all of that on the, or you have to pay, you have to file it by the seventh of the next month and all that. So the tax guys are only bothered about the GST that is going to be filed. I am bothered about the fact that I need to, if I need to file uh, a particular case, uh, court matter, then how I need certain amount of documents uh, from the operations team. Uh, the uh, company secretary is bothered about there's a board meeting coming and how am I going, you know, is this point going to be on the agenda and thing. So there is a complete overlap in this. And at the end of the day, you know, one person is saying, oh my God, I, I have only till the 7th, I have only till the 7th, you know, I need to make this compliance. And we and then we have to send payment reminders to the clients. So who's going to do the payment reminders? The operations guys do the payment reminders, but now the operations guys are just like, we don't know what to do because uh, accounts is telling them something, CS is telling them something, I am telling them something. So, you know, this was a practical example of an actual overlap, then you don't know who is going to do what. Now, obviously, uh, it gets resolved in the, in the manner of things in, in the way you run. Uh, but it is not an ideal way of doing things, you know. It is There is no process. In this particular situation, there is no process. How do you think can a technology platform help in putting this workflow and process and visibility and accountability? Uh, yeah. How do you think can a tool help? Uh, so I think uh, for me, right, I'm just going to speak from my, my Absolutely. experience. Absolutely. Uh, and I'm going to take only this example. For me, uh, you know, many times when we do not have technology, when we are all working and on an ad hoc basis, okay, mm -hmm. on, on each case, case by case. Uh, let's say I have I have to raise 12 invoices on the client. I have raised four invoices and they are not, uh, they have not been paid, but I'm still working on uh, or with the client, but four invoices have not been paid. Then the next, because the invoice is a recurring billing and it goes automatically, that, that part is automated. So that keeps getting raised. So that means the uh, debt on my books keeps increasing. Now, mm -hmm. personally, what I would have preferred is if I have a software which actually stops, like just like there's an automation of the invoice, the minute my debt reaches a particular threshold, it stops. The minute it stops, all my requirement, you know, I will have to pay my forward GST uh, only if I raise an invoice for the next month or I, or I will have to have an agenda item possibly in my board meeting, may or may not, depending on the situation. Uh, only if there's a particular threshold of debt that we cannot handle uh, within the normal scheme of things. I will have to be called in to handle this, uh, this uh, debt 
and to strategize that recovery only if it is at a threshold that cannot be managed within the regular scheme of things so for me honestly i would like a software or or technology which comes to mitigate uh, this situation i like i don't want the situation to come where all of us are coming in and I'm sort of trying to cook the same dish at the same time you know okay if i were to put it differently if you had a you know wish band uh to make a compliance tool a compliance platform uh so what would you say what would i want in it yes absolutely what would i want in it yes okay absolutely. this is a pretty like big answer okay which i have so i hope you have the time because it's something i've thought of quite a bit um and this is not i mean to be honest with you what i find very very lacking in our in our mm-hmm. country is a compliance now all when we think of compliance we are only thinking of bigger companies you know like companies which have processes which have multiple departments which have which need to comply with various departments of the government itself whether it's finance or accounts or uh, other regulatory departments i don't think we ever think of the smaller businesses the solopreneurs the you know the uh, the small businesses who actually contribute to a large section of the uh, of the business community in our country but mm-hmm. i don't think we think of making any or, or there is any sort of process that is more, uh, uh, software or technology or service that is both affordable and speaks directly to them and this is what i have been recently noticing in the last three, uh, four months me doing daily lawyer because mm-hmm. i'm dealing a lot with smaller businesses and solopreneurs and so on uh, and startups and you know that that ecosystem mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, if i had a wish band the mm. number one thing i would want a compliance system a uh, uh, compliance software to do is to be nimble enough uh, or to have various modules that is applicable from everybody from a solopreneur to like a huge organization like infosys which has 3000 employees or whatever x right. 30000 right mm. so i think that is my first that would be my first requirement uh, and then you know it has to be nimble enough for it to grow with me as in if i grow from 1 to 10 my compliance looks very different if uh, if the minute i cross the 10 threshold my compliance looks very different because i have too many other things that come into the play which was not there under 10 right, right. so uh, and then 10 to 100 it looks very different right so i want my uh, software to be nimble enough that's one the second thing i would want it to do is to be like a one platform where right. i can see everything means if i have shops and establishments i have to renew some license uh, i have to apply for some msme registration i have to uh, you know pay my uh, some sort of like every or i have to let's say pay uh, 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 a subscription or whatever to keep up my registration um, i have to do any uh, i have to keep renewing let's say my uh licenses for let's say it's a restaurant or it's some other business which requires a regular licensing i want you know so everything that i have including my incorporation documents every single thing should be visible to me it has to be like one platform where i can get everything i don't need to go to any other website uh and i and you know that should be like my network like what i told you the three sources right, that right. i get information from that should be that that network for me i don't need to go to my network or to the news or to anybody else or to the external third party partners uh, for the business so that is the second thing i will want to do and the third thing that i will want from the software is not just give me information but allow me to comply so um that should be that becomes the portal for me to if i want to do my gst sort of payment i that, that sort of becomes a funnel into the uh, into the website through which i'm doing the payments uh, if i want to uh, keep up my re- uh, registrations whatever registrations i need to keep up on a re- uh, recurring time period then that has to be the funnel that allows me to pay and then keep up those registrations or put those forms now if you are under posh i need to send uh, a report to the ministry of child right um, uh, child and women development whatever so i have to have that uh, little window should allow me to send it out to that ministry you know so there there's if, there if there's a pre fill form where i just have to take yes no yes whatever whatever it is you know and mm-hmm. just do cut 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 and then it it mm-hmm. goes out that you know what are the okay. basic level matrix that a compliance officer would want at any point so uh, for me i would i i think i would want uh, two or three the first metric that i would want it to track is see not all compliance are, are made equal some are extremely important and not doing that will 
risk the very uh, existence of my company or my business or whatever it is uh, and some are uh, procedural that can be rectified either it can be rectified with a penalty or whatever so i want uh, the 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 first metric that i would want it to track or it to throw up to me is what are these red i wouldn't call them red flags but you know the red uh, red line items where i have to know and i have to do it like there is no so maybe like a uh, like an important like you know it divides in importance like this has to be done uh, this is you know the best practice if you do it great uh, and then these are like you have to do it Hmm. but it, so you know something like that so i can also plan what i need to do that is the first thing uh, the other thing i want to do uh, i would like it to do is to uh, give the other metric is on penalties like what are the penalties that i, I stand to incur if i do this if i don't do this where, what is the late payment charge and so on for me to make an understanding of how much because ultimately i also how how much time it will take what are the other internal processes if i can get a checklist uh, on what what are what is required to be done inside like within the organization like a checklist so that i can uh, comply with this like for for many things uh, let's take a simple example let's say gst uh, i need a proper invoice from someone like i need an invoice uh, that invoice has to be uploaded so what so if there's a checklist that says okay did you get an invoice and so on so what is the date what are the uh, what within what day to what date does it have to be for it to go within this in this cycle if it doesn't go in this cycle then what am i risking you know something like that so like mm-hmm. a checklist that i get a process checklist that i then use in my internal compliance to keep my make my processes so um, what and i told you the time i told you penalty and i told you um, and uh, and of course trends if that will be my oh, that will be like the icing on the cake if i can just get trends on how i have performed you know so that i think that will also help us as an organization assess the compliance officer assess what is happening in our company assess whether we need to put in some more processes to make things more seamless assess how many how much costs we are incurring on how many people we are putting in on this do we need all of this so maybe sub, maybe trends also is probably the fourth thing that i will take in terms of metrics okay one question that comes to my mind is you know not so much from a tool or a technical point of view but whenever uh, technology is introduced in uh, whether in form of a software yeah. a platform or a app there's always a resistance to change from within the team to adapt right so yeah. what in your experience can be done to kind of make it more seamless i would say two things the first thing that i i believe really uh, softens the blow is to show the picture of what happens when this doesn't happen mm-hmm. so i think the first thing that really helps and uh, is to show you the uh, the picture of what happens if you know what are the shortfalls of the process that you're using and how it directly impacts you like having a manual process like this may directly impact the employee or the the team because they may not get what they are supposed to get you know because of the human error and they may not even realize Mm-hmm. that they may not get because sometimes you think how must be some pf contribution must be something must be hoga kuch like that and then you don't you know small amounts get lost here and there so i think that was the first thing the second thing uh, is i think training helps a lot because half of the resistance to accept is because it looks very complicated i would though uh, appreciate also one thing in a compliance software because i know that when we think of compliance we think of external compliance in the sense mm-hmm. compliance all the government regulations but uh, i think good external compliance can only happen if there are good processes within the organization however small the organization is uh, it, since you are building a robust compliance software maybe you can think of how you can translate that external into internal compliance into processes so essentially break it down into smaller pieces to see what needs to be done you know maybe a delegation of power maybe escalation of things uh, you know uh, um, and and various kinds of compliance as well like who takes authority who takes responsibility how do you how do you make up process like, like that within the organization i think that will be really useful also even as a solo planner like i want to let's say register something uh 
uh, what do I need before I go to register? I am running an organization today as an LLP, but what do I need before the LLP? I need an address. I need mm-hmm. some kind of registered address. I need, uh, you know, maybe our company account stamp. I need a bank account, you know. So maybe smaller checklists for that. Um, what would I need for a bank account to, to be opened in a corporate name? Uh, like smaller things which actually uh, come to our level where we are and we don't feel like oh this is for the guy sitting in the accounts department or this is for the person sitting in the legal and, and as operations I have nothing to do because I don't care I don't even I have nothing to do with it you know so I think maybe something like that so I think the small business point uh, I completely hear you there are a couple of things because as a small business uh, many roles are rolled into just one person so, yeah. you know, and and uh, generally what happens is that when platforms and tools and softwares are being made, as you rightly said, that everyone's looking at the bigger companies because, okay, clearly the money is there. But it yeah. is the smaller ones who probably need need it more because I might yeah. be the, the founder who needs to take care of legal, uh, the you know, the CS part, the incorporation, the operations, the finance, the tax. And when I have a tool like this, which keeps on telling me that, you know, this has to be done, has to be done, has to be done. So that is where you need more. A big company will have 10 departments taking care of it and have some 200 people for looking at it. So, yeah, Yeah, affordability, as you you rightly said, small businesses would want that affordability and the scalability part to come in. That as you grow, that you're able to use the same thing. So, yeah.